What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for SeerCustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio. It's a very, very interesting guest, Katie Hess of Lotus Way. Katie, how are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy to be here, Jay. It's so awesome to have you. So you guys, let me give you guys Katie's bio. And first, let me say that she is a very fascinating character. Uh, I've never actually had anyone like her on the Jay Campbell podcast. So I'm just as interested in this show today as I'm sure all of you guys will be. But her bio reads, She's the author of Flower Revolution, Revolution and founder of Lotus Way, the world's leading flower elixir apothecary. And she's an expert on flower alchemy. So as I told her before the show started, anyone who is an expert in alchemy is a welcome, a welcome guest on the Jay Campbell podcast. Uh, she captures the life force and the activating potential of flowers and translates it into an accessible method to bring more health and happiness into our daily lives. She's one of the most sustainable forms of natural medicine. Flower remedies are known for their short-term benefits like clarity, focus, and sleep with long-term benefits of rapid personal growth. Again, perfect person to be on the Jay Campbell podcast. She has created Flower Essence Library with elixirs now used by people in more than 50 countries. It's amazing. Host of the Flower Lounge podcast, which features experts in unconventional paths to self-awareness, with listeners in more than 75 countries, Katie also founded the Self Arising Nature Center in Phoenix, Arizona, which is a center for flower essence education experiences and practitioner training. Very awesome, very, very luminous, um, illustrious pedigree. But as I always do on the Jay Campbell podcast, how did you get on the Jay Campbell podcast? Yeah. I mean, when I look at your, everything that you've been up to in the last few years, I think where we most intersect is in this idea of, like you said, of alchemy, of transformation. I know about your past in South America. And um, to me, I think what, what we have most in common is like, what are those little tweaks that we can do to make a big impact? And, sure. you know, the little things that we can do to really accelerate reaching our full potential. And so that's why I'm here. Beautiful. Well, beautiful. Well, it's awesome to have you and I appreciate you coming here. And of course, at the end of the show, I'll let you promote um, your website and your socials and stuff like that. But let's just jump into what we're going to talk about. So flower alchemy, again, a very fascinating, amazing word, but how do flower elixirs work? So they've been around for thousands of years. Most people have never heard of them, but they've been around forever. And the traditional way they were taken was that alchemists, physicians would shaman would recommend you to go out into the forest or the wilderness and look for special flowers whose benefits you needed depending on what was happening in your life and then they would have you every single morning do drops off the tops of the flowers okay so right. that was the old way but 
you know, how many of us have time to be traipsing out around looking for flowers, drinking the dew every morning? Um, or you may live in a climate where there's snow and it's cold. Yeah, New York or City, you... people are doing that. <laughs> I mean, I can't even do it. I'm in the desert in Phoenix, Arizona. We don't even have dew out here. Right. Um, so essentially what happened in the 1940s is that there was a doctor who figured out how to scale it. So to make it super simple, it's like when you're out in nature, how you feel being able to bottle it up. And then as you introduce that in or on your body, what it does is it works through your acupunct acupuncture meridian. So it's like acupuncture without the needles. Nice. It brings you back into your natural balance. Um, you know, you without stress, you without static, you at your natural center of balance in your natural joyful state. And, you know, if that sounds kind of woo, most people don't realize that every flower on the planet has a really specific benefit for the emotional body, right? And so what I usually say is like, how does a cell phone work, right? Like, okay, Jay, if somebody would have told you when you're a kid, you're going to send uh, your podcast, which will be all these like long, fantastic interviews with experts, and it's going to ride on these invisible waves yeah. through space so that your listeners could hear it. It's absolutely insane, right? Yep. Like, we, I don't think we still don't actually know how that's actually working, right? Sure. <laughs> okay, so the same is in nature. You know, Mother Nature's been around for billions of years. And so it's kind of like floral or botanical Wi-Fi. You know, that sounds a little odd, but... No, I like that. The latest upgrade. You know? yeah. No, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, look, I, I say this all the time. Um, being in nature is being in the source field. The energy of and the frequency of nature when you're by yourself, you know, detached from, again, you know, the uh, electromagnetic frequencies of, what you know, uh, devices and screens and all that stuff. And you're just in the awe-inspiring, what I call the field of Mother Nature. It's being around God. I mean, if you're able, like for anyone who's done plant medicine, and is you know advanced user maybe a couple two or three times if you go into nature after you've done that and you've heard the frequency of source which again is a harmonic very resonant you know it's like i i can't i, I could go into a trance and i can actually kind of actually mimic the sound but if you go into like a big field of grass and insects and flowers and trees and just again you know pachamama and just listen to it that is god that is literally the divine creative frequency of life, of sentient conscious life. And it's such an amazing sound. And again, so many people are disconnected from that because they've never really been able to sense that. As you said, it's woo, but that's not woo. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I can tell you right now that uh, my good friend Robert Stanley and I went into the fields of Malibu uh, back in July. And we hiked from, we got there at 7 a.m. at the crack of dawn. And because it was hot, it was in July in Malibu, and we hiked until the, to, to basically dawn or till you know the loss of light, and it was insane. I mean, we were in that field many, many times, and I just laid down. I mean, there were rocks, so I couldn't like fully lay down and just listen to the whirring sounds. And it's and again, it's it it, it sounds like if you, you know for someone not familiar, uh, Katie, it would be like flies or mosquitoes or insects like at a million thousand microprocessing seconds, you know, that is in your ear. But when you're familiar with it and you're, you know, accepting of it and you're connected to it, it's just the sound of God, you know, it's again, the source frequency. So everything you're saying to me is not woo. And I would highly encourage people to continue to listen to this podcast as we go through, because she's talking about things that can absolutely ground you and connect you with the most important things on this planet right now, especially as we find ourselves, this is in January of 2021. Um, but it's so important to ground, right? Yeah. And then like you're saying, it's a language that we already speak. We just don't know that we speak exactly. it exactly, or we don't, we don't necessarily like, it's not something, you know, Helen Keller said the most beautiful things can't actually be seen or touched. They can be felt through the heart. So oh. what I see often is that, humans innately know that different flowers or botanicals make us feel different so like if you like what's a flower that you think is awesome right now name one just a uh, like a, a like lily any. or a, a lily or a daffodil 
Okay, so you are in this garden of giant lilies. Okay, so that makes you feel one way. And then if you were to enter into a redwood forest, it feels totally different, right. right? From like the Amazon jungle. Yeah. Like everything feels so different. We innately know that it makes us feel different. Um, but we just never really like stop to think about it and how we can sort of use it on an everyday basis to remind ourselves of, you know, what our own balance feels like. Beautiful. It's like when you were saying you were hearing the sounds of Pancha Mama. It's like, I think of it in terms of music mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. each plant has a song and each of us has a song, right? And so when we get stressed, we get a little ragged edged. Uh, so introducing this sort of music um, into our bodies is a really gentle, subtle, easy way to, to have a better day and essentially like dissolve limiting patterns right. so that we can be the greatest, boldest human beings that we're meant to be. Beautiful. Yep. So flower essences for right. hormones. Talk about that. Yeah. So... Early on in my career, I realized that the pomegranate flower specifically, you know, the downside about the flower world is that strangely, even though Mother Nature is here for all of us, I think that more women resonate with flowers themselves. And I think that's going to change. Um, but all that to say, I haven't done a lot of research in terms of hormones for men, but I can say that for women, the pomegranate flower is unsurpassed at helping women just find their balance point. So like regularizing cycles and why that's important. You know how many women are trying to get pregnant or like how many couples are trying to get pregnant? No, it's, it's insane. Trying to figure out like when's the right time and the right day and the peak moment. So that particular flower does, does two main things. One is um, for women, it helps line everything up. So it's very predictable. Mm -hmm. um, which is helpful if you either want to get pregnant or don't. And then for men and women, mm, it has the capacity to cleanse your reproductive organs. So if you, for example, have had past partners, that energetic residue stays in your body for a long yes, time. You know, sometimes <laughs> like the ancient masters and teachers would say like seven years, you know, at a diminishing wow. rate. Um, so you know, if you think about, okay, you know, you know, who have I slept with in the last seven years or 10 years, let's right. say, um, sometimes that can be an issue because we want to hear our own song, right? Like what's my own music, but then I have all this sort of like conflicting data and cellular memories and good, bad, ugly, like wonderful things. And then also thought patterns that are getting in the way right. or simply Maybe you're trying to end a relationship, but you just keep feeling this tug, right? Um, so what we found is that the pomegranate essence can, when taken regularly, reduce those seven years to one year. It's just like this really gradual, gentle cleanse period. You know, and we hear about like herbs for cleansing our liver, but we never think about how do we cleanse our energy? Yeah. So that's one really helpful way. Um, how, how would someone get um, pomegranate? And before you answer, um, you know, my good friend owns um, a company called Ascent Nutrition, and he is massively into, I should probably actually introduce you to him. Um, you guys would definitely find a lot of resonant frequencies. Uh, he, he's into similar things. And um, he's been singing the phrases of pine pollen, like really high quality you know, taken from like the wilds of Alaska, wherever he gets it, Siberia or something. I don't know where, but uh, he said it. He, I have it right here. He, he sent it to me. This is his company. It's a scent nutrition, but he raves about pine pollen. And um, I'm not using it, full disclosure, because it has a little bit of alcohol in it. I'm completely, you know, I never was a drunk or anything, but I just avoid alcohol. Don't want it to change my vibrational levels at all. But uh, he raves about it. So, uh, you know, so my point is, is that I do know that all the answers are found in nature. It's like you said, we're just so detuned because of technology and, you know, medicine, sick care, all that nonsense that we, we walk away from the answers and the answers are, you know, again, in Pach Pachamama, but how would someone get uh, pomegranate? What's the easiest way? 
I mean, we, we make it into a flower elixir format, which is a solar infusion, a fancy name for right. um, essentially saying like how you get that from the botanical stored in water. Um, we use a tiny bit of alcohol to preserve it, just yeah. to keep it alive, um, honey to make it yummy. Um, and you can just take it as an elixir. What we recommend is um, we have a blend called Radiant Energy. And you just take five drops five times a day, or you just put it in your coffee, water, tea, you don't even taste it. Um, you know, it's kind of like hard to believe that it could yeah. be that powerful. Um, but you feel a difference within generally about three to five days. Wow. That's awesome. All right. Well, we'll I'll talk to you about that stuff uh, after the show. Um, okay. So then like specific flowers and their healing qualities. And, and I do know a little bit about this stuff because I've had people talk about, um, you know, shamans I've had on the show who've talked about the wonderful uh, medicinal qualities of plants and, you know, various extracts and stuff like that. But talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so we have about 250 flowers in our collection. Um, and that's a, a big part of what I do is go out into the wild, find new flowers, find what is it that the people I can reach today need? Because it's always awesome. changing, right? Like what we yeah. needed in 2015 was totally different than what we needed in 2020. Um, so some examples would be like sleep, you know, for folks who can't sleep, um, passion flower is great. And you may have heard of drinking it in a tea, but in a flower essence format, it's working on a more energetic level. Right. Um, if anybody gets neck and shoulder tension, dandelion flower essence, yep. um, let's like all the way to like fear of going crazy, um, uh, sacred day Tura to heartbreak um a lot of red flowers like hollyhock rose rhododendron um hong kong orchid are for healing the heart i mean you could literally name off 25 like human conditions and there will be a flower for it so how did you find out that hong kong orchid heals the heart chakra like how how did you learn that well I mean, in short, it's an intuitive process. Sure. Uh, I started out just sitting with the plant. I would meditate um, to try to be as neutral as possible mm -hmm. and then just do it like in the olden days in the herbalist. And just, I would just ask the plant, what are you for? What can I tell people? What do you magnify? What do you dissolve? What, and, and, and even more specifically, like what language do I need to share this with yeah. the people in my community so that they'll understand what you're for? Uh, and then uh, to be honest, in the beginning, it was like, you know, maybe five sentences and I oh have thought God. I was crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I like, am I really, this is really, you know, valid. Um, and now, you know, I'll get like several pages of information and we have a group of 150 people that will give the elixir to and get reports back, you know, just to make sure and double check that I'm not crazy. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, but you still want to double check your work. Um, to make sure that what we say will happen is happening for people. Yeah, hey, I know you're not crazy. <laughs> your en I mean, your energy, as I told you from the moment, so I'm now very in touch with my intuitive, energetic, um, like I just know, right? Like, I mean, look, I'm wearing, you know, this giant Moldavite rock. I have Pharaoh stone, which is, you know, Egyptian tectite, more Moldavite. Like I, I now able, you know, I even have, I just took it out, but I carry it in my pocket, more desert glass in my pocket. These are the highest vibrational stones. And so it's like, I sense people's energy now so amazingly. And so like, you have such a powerful, like mystical nature about you that you can take a person like me who's extremely high energy. And I've become much more calm and much more tranquil, like just talking to you. Cause like, a, again, as an energy reader or as like, you know, intuitive or empathic as I am now, and I've obviously I've not always been this way. We all learn, right. Um, I kind of can go up and down based on the level. And so for me now, when I get around, you're a master, but, but when I get around people like you, it's amazing for me because it really channels my center of being. And I can just kind of go into the frequency that you're, uh, reflecting, which is again, a master's, uh, you know, like when you say, hey, I've been doing this for 20 years, you know, like I already know, like, I mean, the stuff that you're talking about, which we're not even really going into depth, but, and again, as you know, from my background that you know about me and going to Peru and stuff that, you know, all of this was made very evident 
when we were on Lake Titicaca and we did ceremonies. You know, I mean, I was with people who were non-believers, as you would call, you know, not 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 awake. And the the lake talked to them, and they were both like, again, like they were crying. They they didn't know really how to react, you know, to the second ceremony, and like they were kind of freaked out to talk to me and my wife, who were much more advanced. Um, but they did, and once they did, they opened up. They were just it was it was a transformation. You know, it was like probably right around here to here, you know, in their soul. And so it was, it's a, it's phenomenal. And I know, you know, this, you know, not even talking about flowers, just energetically, anyone can advance when they open their heart to the awareness that they can. That yeah. And that seems totally makes sense. And that, and, and that seems to be like the only thing we need to actually do, right. is to like open the container as wide as possible for right. as much of an experience as we can allow, because it's like, especially in, in the United States, we're trained not to feel, to try to do it all ourselves, to be perfect. We're really self-critical and we don't want to feel uncomfortable emotions. We don't want to feel jealous or angry or critical or judgmental, right? But, you know, or like deep intimate love that blows your mind. Like those can be really scary for people. So I think yeah, definitely. Any practice, whether it's flower essences or meditation, that can expand your ability to be aware and let things move through you mm -hmm. um, is a way for you to like expand your powerful capacity in the world. Beautiful. Yeah, it's about acceptance and allowance. As you said, expand the container. Yeah. Um, that was for in my life, it, you know, especially as I've evolved over the last two or three years, that was the greatest, the greatest thing that I could receive was just the reality of accepting and allowing everything to not define things, you know, cause, cause type a, uh, achiever types, you know, we want to gotta be like, <laughs> right. And, and, it, and it's like, when you let go. Right. And I can use the cliche, let go and let God. And then, you know, fully surrender. And again, as you said, it, it's not easy. We are taught in the United States that things have to be, you know, hierarchically classified and organized. If you want to be a successful person, you know, you, your calendar should be starting at 445. And then, you know, you should do this, this and this. And it's like, once you get to a point where like, okay, I figured out what I want to do in my life, or I kind of figured out like what my gifts are. It's just letting it happen naturally. Now, of course, you you have to be driven. You you, you want to go out and do what you're doing, like you do or what I do. But it's truly letting go of the idea that it has to be a certain way. And so many people never figure that out, and they go to you know seminar after seminar of self exploration and internalized growth, and it's still they come back with that idea that I got to do this this way. And so just, again, letting go and again, let God, you know, and that, that has been the greatest gift for me to truly accept that and to not be sitting there worried at night thinking I didn't do the six things on my top 10 list today. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But we are taught that stuff, right? You, you read these books when you're on this path and, you know, they want you to have, when I say they, I don't know who they is, but I mean, you know, you're told to create like a plan. And yes, you have to have a plan in your life, right? Like you built your apothecary and, you know, I've built my authorship and all the things with a plan. But at the same time, like I finally got to the point where I've realized that there's no defined way. There's mm -hmm. no specificity in how it's going to materialize. It's just like you said, it's just expanding the container as far and wide as possible and being cool with whatever happens. Yeah, I remember when my teacher, my spiritual teacher said once, he said, um, when you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am such a loser, but like really know it and really mean it. He said, then you're, then you're onto something. And at yeah. first I thought, oh, wow, that's so, you know, mean. And then, but then I like really got it because it's right. like that acceptance piece, like you're talking about. And then once you reach that bottom point, then you can laugh. Then the whole thing is exactly. a farce. You're actually not yeah. a loser, but right. you have to kind of get there, you know, like when you feel so small and, and so like insignificant, it's, 
in those moments that you have the capacity to feel like you're the world, that's like the you are gift. everything, right? Yeah, that's the true gift. That is that is the true gift is learning through the contrast. The gift is the contrast. I used to say the gift is in the shit. I mean, that's when you truly expand, when you define your lowest points as the greatest gift, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, people will talk about the dark nights of the soul and it has become cliche, but if you don't have dark nights of the soul, you truly can't expand. There are many people. It's human. Yeah. I mean, there are many people that have been given things in their life who never truly expand because they never struggle, you know, mm -hmm. and if you don't struggle and again, you can struggle in a million different ways. Again, it's definition. Your perception is not always the, the answer, but like you have to reverse you have to, you know, like uh, the great Walter Russell says, we come out of the womb and we're in the jungle. And now the path is climbing to the top of the mountain, regardless of how you climb to the top of the mountain. That's the path. So you have to figure out your path, but there is no right or wrong way. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A gentleman reached out to me yesterday through social media and he was like, well, you know, I, I just got off four years of, of psych meds. I just finally tapered off. And I, I wondered if you could tell me what flower essence could help me, you know, through. And That's as awesome. he was, as he was talking about his experience, like repetitive thoughts, racing mind, anxiety. Right. I was like, that sounds pretty human. Like I, I'm pretty sure, you know, not to say anything against um, psychiatrists or their work, but that just sounds really human to me. And if we start to live in this sort of sterile world where we're not allowed to feel the depths of the insanity that we can feel as human beings, then how are we gonna know the, the heights of joy, right? Sure. Sure. Um, so I'm just really interested in like having conversations about like, well, isn't that normal? Yeah. Like, doesn't every human experience that? And, and, and why do we, like, why do we label ourselves or think that we're somehow, there's something wrong with us because we have intensity of emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that being so. said, I mean, then you can turn to mother nature, you can turn to flowers, you can turn to, you know, the botanical realm to be there as a supportive partner um, in helping at least take the edge off. How did you get on this path? Like what led you to the nature, the, the, the flower, the botanical world? Is there anything specific? Uh, after I graduated college, I was just like searching, searching, searching. You know, I was like, how am I going to help the world? I want to help people reach their full potential, but I don't know how. And through a series of coincidences, I ran into an expert. There are no from coincidences, Spain. Katie. Right. I know. <laughs> I mean, to be quite literal, I like check I, you. I'm just playing. Continue. <laughs> I mean, no, but you're right, though, because the way that I found this expert, I was walking down the street in Mexico, and this sweet little indigenous lady handed me this flyer. You know, it's very common in wow. Mexico. And what usually, part of Mexico? It's not Querétaro, three hours outside of Mexico City. Okay. Not familiar with it, but I'm very, very familiar with Mexico. But like, beautiful woman with braids tied in the back and traditional dress like not in I'm not a part of the modern world sure. and then when I went to read the card I was like oh this is actually really cool I'm yeah. super interested in this and then I turned around and it was like she had vanished I spent of the course. next half hour searching for this woman who like dropped from wow. the sky she was probably an angel um, of light or you know a golem or whatever you know the indigenous call about it. but yeah but she was there to guide you as a guardian and then and then I met my teacher from Spain and then that was that. I just um, became super inspired. He he said that if if we could get 3% of the world's population actively working with flower remedies, it would create enough positive ripple effect that it would change the outcome of the future. And I wasn't sure what that meant, but it sounded really cool. And we tend to think in the beginning of like, I'm so little, you know, I remember being seven years old and like trying to, um, like astral project myself to wherever I needed to be, which never worked. But we think like, what difference can little old me make? But when it's really just like a few percent, there are a few of us that can make a great impact. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial 
for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. See, for me, it's weird. Uh, I, I, I generally enjoy, I love talking to you. We're definitely going to talk much more after this podcast, by the way. Uh, but uh, for me, it was the opposite. Like I knew, I had this like commanding soul, like I'm an ancient soul. And I knew that I was going to do great things. And But like you, I was very in service to, you know, to others. I mean, there were some times in my life where my ego got out of control, but um, I wanted to help as many people as I possibly could. And I was always questioning authority and questioning reality and questioning <laughs> the system and the control mechanisms. And I mean, literally, like I tell people, like when I, you said seven, so I'll say I was six, I ran out of the back of Catholic church <laughs> and my dad chased me out, you know, to the back and he's like, where are you going? I'm like, not ever going back there, bro. <laughs> right. So souls you know, all souls are walking a path, you know, back to the recognition of God, right? And again, some of us faster than others, and there is no uh, judgment on the path and, and at the rate and speed that someone gets back to perfection. But um, I really do agree with that. I resonate with that very much. I mean, obviously, I'm a huge student of Dr. David Hawkins, you know, and he talked about how one person at the level of consciousness of 400 can lift the vibration, the conscious reality of 750,000. And then one person at the 500 level of love, not unconditional love, but just love as a resonant frequency lifts 10 million. So that statement of 3%, 3% would change the entire planetary vibration. We would literally reach planetary consciousness like that. So I think right now, Katie, you know, you and I are walking that path and contributing to that final outcome. And I don't think we're that far away now. I think that consciousness is expanding so rapidly right now mm -hmm. that nothing can prohibit it. No evil government, control structure, figure, person, religion, anything. It, it, it's done. They're all unraveling. And, you know, the more people that are familiar with Katie Hess, and Lotus Way and, you know, look into Pachamama for their uh, answers and stop going to the sick care systems to get SSRIs and other nonsensical things that do nothing, um, the faster we get there. I mean, it, it really is that simple. And so that's exactly, again, why you and I connected today and why I'm going to push, you know, you, not me personally, but, you know, my energy and my brand is like to push people like you into the ether because you guys, you know, I mean, together it's obviously unity, but there's nothing more important than what you're doing. There really isn't. I mean, it's like I tell people every day, it's like the only thing that matters at this point now is raising consciousness. There's nothing else, you know, because once we get to that unification of we're all here, we're all in human bodies, we're all with the same struggles, conquests and victories. Um, until we see that from that level and we don't see things from the matrix level of like, well, so-and-so is a billionaire and so-and-so, you know, is a janitor, you know, like mm -hmm. you said, which is the control structure, the con the construct of what is pushed to us, especially in first world nations. Um, we won't, it, it's just going to be the same old shit. We're, we're just going to destroy ourselves or blow ourselves up, you know, and then there's, it has to restart over. <laughs> And who knows how many times it's actually, we've actually been, you know, through the restart or the reboots, right? So like I'm fighting that tooth and nail right now and fighting is not the right word, but like I'm against and resisting restarting, right? Like I will do everything in my power to promote people like you and to talk to people like you and just to let people know that it's all about energy and frequency and consciousness. There is nothing else anymore, but consciousness, you know, how can you help other people raise their consciousness? That's, that's it. It's totally an inside job. It comes from within. And we want to, we, I think like our younger childhood selves want to think like someone will save me or yeah. know they'll really eventually think out for my best interest or right. no, there couldn't be people that evil in the world. Right. But it's like the answer 
is then to conquer our own demons on the inside. It's like the inside realization of our full potential. And then, like you said, we're unstoppable. Yeah. We're unstoppable. Totally. And I mean, we as a collective. Yep. Yep. No, it's yeah. true. I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing though. Like now with much information out there about meditation, introspection, and contemplation and grounding in nature and, you know, achieving stillness, mind silence, whatever you want to call it, that there's so many people out there still looking to the external for that savior or that mm -hmm. answer or that somebody, like you said, that's going to save them. And it's like, no, dude, like only you only have control over your vibration. Vibration is all right. Like you can literally enhance your vibration, which raises the collective vibration just by being a better person, being in service being kind, compassionate, forgiving, concerned, creative, you know, in the service of others. That's it. Again, I, you know, that's all I, that's obviously I'm like a broken record, but it, it, nothing else matters unless you're in the service of the collective. And obviously what you do is helping people uh, achieve, you know, wondrous things. Um, you know, let me, let me just ask you for some final thoughts. And then of course I want you to uh, promote uh, your business and then you and I will talk when this podcast is over. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> what I, what I have seen in the last 20 years is that the, the, the power of mother nature is incredibly mind blowing. I mean, like when I first started out working with people one-on-one, -on -one, I would take before and after photographs. And the changes I would see in people's facial expressions and their bodies in like three weeks was, you know, it drove me crazy because I was in a confidential setting and I wasn't allowed to share it. Um, so I just share that to say like, it can be so powerful and so gentle at the same time. And then in the end, like, you don't have to take flower elixirs. Like I'm just such a huge fan because I've been working with them and I know what they're capable of. But even then you don't need that. You can go out in your backyard Right. And, you know, find those flowers that are like sprouting up in your backyard and sit with the trees and sit with the plants and ask for wisdom. It's a good practice, you know, and then maybe something will pop in your head and then you think, oh, my God, am I just crazy? Am I making this up? And it's not. It's real. It's well, wisdom. Real. It's wisdom. Um, but, yeah, if you if you as if your listeners are interested in diving in and exploring for sure. really exploring themselves um, with this catalyst of flower elixirs. Uh, we're always, you know, available for help and they can always find us at lotusway.com. Let me just say um, to, to what you were just saying, uh, my wife and I read the Anastasia book series from Russia. Oh, isn't that fun? So we read that book series like three years ago. And honestly, this was the first year last year, actually, um, God, it's almost a year ago now. Holy moly. But in February, we created a grow box where we live. We were in the very infested area of Los Angeles. And so we moved. And now I'm living down, God, thank, thank God, uh, in the wine country of Marietta. So I'm still in California. I haven't gotten out. But I'm far enough away from, you know, that, those who would hold us back that, you know, and I'm in a beautifully serene place in my backyard, you know. But anyway, we, we before I moved, we created a grow box. And all my daughters, or my wife and three daughters, right? So yeah, I'm Mr. Testosterone. I have all this estrogen around me, but uh, they, you know, we licked- Did you suck on the seeds? Oh, absolutely. All right. So, That's listen, awesome. We, we, it, 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 it was so phenomenal. So I'm saying this story so people can understand like how powerful and profound the things that you do are. But we we planted um, squash mm -hmm. yam, and another vegetable and I it escapes me right now, but it doesn't matter, but I am not kidding. You. And again, we had just a small backyard in West Covina, California. And, you know, our dogs would go in our grow box and, you know, do their thing. And we, I mean, it was the best tasting stuff that I've ever eaten in my entire life. And every one of those were sealed with love, you know, saliva, the DNA of each of us. And I mean, they grew too, uh, Katie, to monstrous proportions. I mean, they were, I mean, again, how much love is in our family and how much love we put into those sprouts and those seeds. And it was, uh, I mean, honestly, since we moved down here to Marietta, the first thing I did, we refurbished the whole house. We moved here in September. The first thing I did was build a beautiful state-of-the-art grow box in my backyard. <laughs> right. So, I mean, and, and, and not only that, we then built or not built, but we planted five trees 
um, that will grow to the maximum height that's allowable in our community, you know, and I'm not going to, it's not going to preclude into my neighbor's house or whatever like that or stuff like that. But I mean, like our backyard within one year will be a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It will be a natural sanctuary and everything that we eat from a vegetable standpoint um, and even, you know, yams will be grown by us. Right. And as you know, it's not expensive. You know, we're in a time now where things are getting weird anyway outside. Who knows what's going to happen from a species standpoint? But you should, as a, as a, a, you know, I highly recommend it, but everyone should be growing their own food. You know, as long as you have glass, you can. I love that example too of growing in your backyard because that's when you see like how terribly abundant Mother Nature is, right? Like the moment you grow something, you're like, oh my God, this is just growing way too much. I've got to give some to my neighbors, to my extended family. I mean, I was very resistant. I literally told my wife, I'm like, come on. Where are you? Look at our backyard. (laughs) I mean, we did not have a big backyard and our dogs had worn it down, you know? So she was like, oh, you'll see. And I mean, yeah, it was just mind blowing. So now it's like completely changed me. And, and, you know, that's what's important. And all my daughters are, like I said, I mean, you'll probably be hearing more from us. (laughs) Oh, and- so when somebody knocks on your door and says, hey, we got a genetically modified food because there's not enough to go around on the planet, you're going to be like, look at my grow box. Dude, I could feed like three families with oh this, God, dude, right? Don't even get me going <laughs> about GMO food, dude. Like I have arguments. I, I mean, I don't anymore. I just don't partake in that. But like, yeah, it's amazing. Like how they brainwash human beings to think that genetically modified food Here. is important because it feeds more people. So unbelievable. Incredible. Katie Hess, you are a savior to this planet. And I truly appreciate you coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. So um, I will give you the final thoughts. I know that your website is Lotus Way and that is spelled W-E-I.com. But just some final thoughts in a very profound podcast. Well, I would just want to say that as a reminder to myself and as a reminder to you and as a reminder to anyone listening that everything, it's going to sound so cliche, everything lies within us, but that means like, there's nothing we have to do. Like our, our beingness is enough and sitting with ourselves and feeling what it feels like to be ourselves and to feel our heart beating and to ride the waves of our breath. There's nothing more profound than that. And so when we get in the spinning out mode of like, I've got to do more, just an encouragement to remind ourselves that we're enough and that things are unfolding. And that as long as we're always striving to be self-aware, we're moving towards expansion and we can surprise ourselves with how wise and wonderful and powerful beyond our imagination that we all are. Beautiful. I really appreciate you coming on the Jay Campbell podcast today. You were amazing. So so guys, uh, guys and gals watching this podcast, please go to Katie's website. Again, it's L-O-T-U-S-W-E-I.com and support her because you need to find out more about the botanical world and how much it can help you. Macho Mama is the answer to many of the issues that are on the planet. So again, love and appreciate you for coming on the podcast today. Let me just say to all of you guys, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.